Hey, welcome to another episode of AWS Cloud Bytes. I'm your host, Bhavesh Kumar. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and click the notification bell icon. This is an AWS News Update episode. Let's look at some AWS top news headlines. The first news is coming from Amazon Location Service. Amazon Location Service is now generally available. In December of 2020, Amazon Location Service was introduced in preview form for us to start building web and mobile applications with location-based features. Amazon Location Service is now generally available with two new features, routing and satellite imagery. What all features Location Service include? Maps, places, routes, trackers, and geofences. Maps to visualize location information. Places to enable your application to offer point of interest search functionality. Convert addresses into geographic coordinates in latitude and longitude or geocoding. And convert coordinates into a street address or reverse geocoding, you can say. Routes to use driving distances, directions, and estimated arrival time in your application. Trackers allows you to retrieve the current and historical location of the devices running your tracker-enabled application. Geofences to give your application the ability to detect and act when a tracked device enters or exits a geographical boundary you define as a geofence. When a breach of geofence is detected, Amazon Location will send an event to Amazon Event Bridge, which can trigger a downstream set of actions like invoking a Lambda function or sending information to SNS topics. This level of integration with Amazon services is one of the most powerful feature of Amazon Location. It will help you shorten your application's time to production. The two features that we talked about, one of them was routing. The second one was satellite imagery. You can use satellite imagery to pack your maps with information based on the context of the map user. So it helps the map user answer questions like, is there a swamp in that area? What does that building look like? While routing, with routing Amazon location routes, your application requests the travel time, distances, and all directions between two locations. This makes it possible for your application to obtain accurate travel time estimate based on the live road and traffic info. In the Amazon Location Console, you can choose route calculators. The routes are provided by ESRI or Hair Map, which I'm not surprised because Hair Map is another map provider like Google. And I believe this service will be really helpful for someone trying to build a map-based or geotagging or geofencing or route-based applications. In the long run, it will be really good competitor to what you could build using Google Maps. Moving on to the next news. The next news is coming from UAE. AWS region in the United Arab Emirates, or UAE, AWS Middle East region in UAE is in the works and will open in the second half of 2022. The new region will give AWS customers in the UAE the ability to run workloads and store data that must remain within the country, in addition to the ability to serve local customers with even lower latency. This region will have three AZs and will be the second AWS region in the Middle East, joining the existing AWS region in Bahrain. There are 80 AZs within 25 AWS regions in operation today. They have 15 more AZs and five announced regions underway. So if you look at the map on the left side, you'll find there are regions in Cape Town, there is one in Bahrain currently functional, then the map shows a part of Europe having UK and some part of France um, having all those regions. And there are many edge locations. Good addition to the overall serviceability. 
uh, adding a new region in Asia Pacific and Southeast Asia, Middle East will strengthen and lower the latency for customers or clients in this particular region. Moving on to the next news. AWS Lambda extensions are now generally available. It comes with a new performance improvements in an expanded set of partners. Lambda extension uses the extension API to register for functions and execution environment lifecycle events. In response to these events, extensions can start new processes or run logic. Lambda extensions can also use Runtime Logs API to subscribe to a stream of the same logs that Lambda service sends to Amazon CloudWatch directly from the Lambda execution environment. Lambda streams the log to the extension and the extension can then process, filter, or send the logs to the preferred destination. Most customers use Lambda extensions without needing to know its capabilities, uh, the capabilities of extension API. You can just consume the capabilities of an extension by configuring the option in your Lambda function. You can install manage extensions using the Lambda console, the CLI or infrastructure as code, and using tools like CloudFormation, serverless, uh, application model, and Terraform. The improvements they have in this particular services, this enables the extension to perform activities like sending telemetry to a preferred destination after the function's response has been returned. There are new extension partners such as Impreva, Instana, Sentry, Site24 by 7, and the AWS distro for open telemetry. AWS has enabled functions to send responses as soon as function code is complete without waiting for the included extension to finish. What are the use cases? Use cases are capturing diagnostic information before, during, and after the function invocation, automatically instrumenting your code without needing to do code changes, fetching configuration settings or secrets before the function invocation, detecting and alerting on function activity through security agents, and sending telemetry to custom destinations such as S3, uh, Kinesis, uh, Elasticsearch services directly and asynchronously from your Lambda functions. The AWS Lambda function extensions provide a simple way to extend Lambda execution environment, which is where your code is executed. AWS customers, partners, and the open source community can use the new Lambda extension API to build their own extensions which are companion processes that augment the capabilities of Lambda functions. Now, pricing extensions share the same billing model as the Lambda function. So you are charged for the compute time used in all phases of the Lambda lifecycle. For functions invocation, you pay for requests served and the compute time used to run the code in all extensions together in one millisecond increments. The new partners they have is AppDynamics, CoraLogix, Datadog, Dynatrace, HashiCorp Vault, Honeycomb. Performance. Lambda extensions might impact the performance of your function because they share the same resources such as CPU, memory, storage within the function. And because extensions are initialized before the function code, example, if an extension performs compute intensive operations, you might see the function's execution duration increase because the extension and your function code share the same CPU resources. Moving on to the next. Resolve IT incidents faster with Incident Manager. This is a new service. It's a incident manager service. Introducing Incident Manager in AWS Systems Manager Incident Manager lets you easily create a collection of incident responses, resources that are readily available when an alarm goes off. These resources include contacts, escalation plans, response plans. Creating a response plan lets you prepare for incident in a standardized way, so you can react as soon as they happen and resolve it quicker. Response plans can be triggered automatically by a CloudWatch alarm, 
or an Amazon event bridge, even notification of your choice, and it can be triggered manually also. So the contacts here are basically team member who may be engaged in solving incident and how to page them like voice, email, SMS, escalations, um, any escalations that need to go can go through escalation plans. Additional contacts who should be paged if the primary on-call responder doesn't acknowledge the incident. Response plans is basically who to engage contacts or escalation plan contacts, what they should do, some kind of a run book, and where to collaborate. Moving on to the next news alliance. Amazon FinSpace is a data management and analytics service. FinSpace is basically a financial space uh, service that has been introduced. FinSpace reduces the time you spend finding, preparing petabytes of financial data to be ready for analysis from months to minutes. With Amazon FinSpace, you pay for users who can access the application. You pay for the storage you use monthly and for the cluster, the compute nodes basically that are that are used to prepare and analyze your data. You define your data access policies in one place and FinSpace enforces them while keeping an audit log to allow for compliance and audit activities or activity reporting basically. What are the benefits? You find the data within just a few clicks. You get insight in minutes. You can ensure the regulatory compliance and eliminate any kind of operational overhead. Amazon FinSpace is a data management and analytics service purpose built for the financial service industry, FSI. You can look at the, the picture above. You add the data where you provide the information such as data feeds, track versions of those data feeds, process correction, and generate historical views. You can use, then move to the organize where you can use the business terms, which is accounting terms, maybe a financial term, very relevant to the, to the domain itself. So use relevant business terms and classify data uh, so it is easily discoverable and shareable across teams. You prepare and analyze data using Amazon FinSpace library of 100 plus pre-built functions, common for financial data like time bar and Bollinger Bands, and then you have all those kind of reports. This is the end of the show. Thank you for watching. If you like the content, please like, subscribe, and press the bell icon for future updates. This is your host, Bhavesh Kumar, signing off. Thank you.